Hello fellow book nerds and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about my favorite trope, which is the bully slash high school romance. And I'll just let you know, none of these are young adult. They're all pretty much the more mature high school romances. And I think you'll know what I mean once I get talking about some of them because some of them are very popular. And right now this trope is just booming. It seems like every author is just coming out with their own form of a bully slash high school romance. So. You don't want to strike why the iron's hot. And this series will go on for a long time because I have so many of them. I've read so many and I still have so many to read because like I said, everybody's coming out with them. There's so many new ones. So let's get started. So right off the bat, my favorite one of all time is I Dare You by Chantal Tessier. I'm not going to talk much about this one at all, if actually not any, because I did do a full review on it. But some of you might not know that this is a high school romance story. And it's not as much bully, but it is definitely a darker high school romance. So go check that out and watch my review too. So the first one I really want to get into, and even so, I want to save this a full review for this one, I'm going to reread it. I can't wait to reread it. It's been like two years since I read it. But I'm going to save all the details for when I do that. So the cream of the crop when it comes to bully romances. This is the, I would say, the number one bully romance out there. Because it doesn't get more of a bully and psycho than this character. And that's the Fear Me series by B.B. Reed. It is on Kindle Unlimited. It's part of a series of five. But the last three are after high school. So you, the first two are the only two that have to be read definitely in order, but I would just read the full series, to be honest. It's that good. It is definitely in my hall of fame. I know it's a hit or miss series with a lot of people, but for me, it was a home run. I loved it. Yes, there are triggers, but I will say this, there's no cheating, other woman, other man drama, but there is, it's not rape, but it's not not rape. I know, and this could be touchy for some people who don't like reading that because she's not exact. She doesn't really tell him no, but she's not exactly fully into it, but she's not really not into it. So it's all kind of based on your interpretation. It was hard to read some scenes. I will say that like you were a little, a little uncomfortable because he is full blown and psychotic and does not take no for an answer, even if she said no. But yeah, so it's a little uncomfortable. So I will put that out there. Oh, and there's murder. But other than that, no other triggers. <laughs> so this story is about Kieran and Lake, and Kieran is the ultimate bully. This is not your typical, I love her from afar and I can't have her, so I'm gonna be mean to her. This is straight up, I hate you. <laughs> he hates her because he thinks she is the reason he spent a year in juvenile hall. And the first full book is just him making her life a living hell. Oh, the one thing I'm not crazy about in these first two books, a little less toward the second book, Lake is a doormat. She, she pretty much is, and I know a lot of people don't like that. And she lets Kieran steamroll over her with everything. But if you read the whole series, you'll definitely like both characters a lot more. Kieran tames down and Lake grows a backbone toward book five. It's like a different couple. And she does change a little bit toward the end of the second book. She stands up a bit for herself. But you do have to read a lot of her being a doormat throughout this relationship. So I promise a full review will be coming some point this year. I know that's very vague. But until then... I do recommend you read this series. It's really good. I know there are going to be mixed reviews when you look it up, but if you really love the bully romance, this is the cream of the crop of it. So I would read it. The second book I want to talk about is probably the most underrated bully romance. It's not from a known author. The book is not very known. And that's Endgame by Chloe Walsh. It is on Kindle Unlimited, not part of a series. There is other woman, other man drama, a little, well, I'll just say other woman drama a little bit, but it's a little tricky, but he's with her up until a certain point. Him and the hero heroine are not together, so it's not technically cheating. Other than that, there is no other triggers. Put it, it is a 
Hall of Fame book. I love this series and I'm so disappointed I can't physically own it because Chloe Walsh apparently does not sell them by the physical cover, at least not that I have found. If anyone knows, please tell me because I want that book in my hand. So this series is about Mercy and Rourke. Rourke? I think that's how you pronounce his name. We'll go with it. Don't you hate when you read an entire book and you find out you've been pronouncing one of the main characters names wrong the entire time? Or worse, the author? Which I'm gonna flub so many times on this channel. Just warning you. So Mercy and Rourke are stepbrother and sister and her mom marries his dad and her and her mom end up moving into Rourke's family house. And right off the bat, these two just clash. Rourke is really mean to her. He's trying to ice her out gives her a nickname, number, calls her number six, because she's like the sixth uh, stepchild that has come into this family. Really mean, but she's not a doormat. She will fight back and gives it to him just as hard as he gives it to her. So Rourke is definitely jealous, possessive here, because Mercy pushes his buttons and like flirts with his friends and it just drives him up the wall, but that ultimately makes him confess his feelings for her, but it's not an easy confession at all. And Mercy is just trying to survive the school year and graduate and get the hell out of town. That's her whole goal. She just wants to be away from her mother, away from this family, and not look back. So I don't know why this book is so unknown. Every time I recommend it, the people have never heard of it or read it, which is such a shame because it really is a little hidden gem in the bully high school world. So I highly recommend it. And will I read it again? 100%. So the third book I want to talk about is Nero by Sarah Brienne. And unfortunately, I don't think it's on Kindle Unlimited anymore. When I read it, it was not, so I had to buy it. Then she briefly, I think, put them on Kindle Unlimited, and I think it's they're off now. As far as triggers, there's murder, because <laughs> it's a mafia story. It's a mafia family. And there's a little bit of other woman drama, but it's only in the beginning of the book, so you don't have to worry about it once the H and the... the as far as triggers, there is murder because it is a mafia story. The family is in the mafia. But, and there's no other woman, other man drama, only a little bit in the beginning. But once the hero and the heroine get together, it really doesn't, is non existent. And it is part of a series. I personally did not read past book two because honestly, the series declines dramatically past book two. And there's like six books at this point. And I just feel like you should know that because now you do have to pay for these. So really, and I wasn't even crazy about book two, Nero is a solid book. It is definitely a high school, darker high school romance. It's not a bully romance. So this story is about Ellen Nero. Nero's family is in the mafia and his dad is the head of it. And when he graduates, he's going to be worked into the family business. And Elle is a sweet, quiet girl just trying to finally get out of high school. She was, she was seriously bullied. By, not by Nero or his friends, but by other kids all through high school. So she's just trying to get through this and get out and be done with everyone there. And she works at this diner. And one day when she's taking out the trash in the back, she sees a bunch of guys kill another guy. Come to find out the people who did the killing were Nero's family, the mafia. And they know she saw. So his father makes Nero befriend Elle to see what she knows and to keep her quiet. These two just develop a really strong bond because Nero becomes super possessive of her because he starts to figure out what happened to her throughout high school with all the bullying. And it's not just word bullying, it was physical abuse. And it drives him crazy that he never once stuck up for her or helped her and he just wants revenge for her and goes after those bullies and those people that tortured her. So what I recommend this book, yes, read Nero. And then everything after Nero, I would honestly say don't continue, but Nero is worth it. And you and it doesn't end in a cliffhanger so you can read Nero and be complete and wash your hands clean of the series. Cause that's basically what I did. And will I read it again? I don't know, it could go either way. So we'll see in the future. So the final book I wanna talk about came out this year and it's Cruel by Coralie June and Raven Kennedy. It is on Kindle Unlimited. As far as triggers go, there is no, there really is no other woman, other man drama. There's only a little bit other man, but it's just jealousy. Nothing's actually there. And there's murder. Because once again, <laughs> every high school, every high, darker high school romance has to involve murder. Because all high schoolers are killing people these days, apparently. 
So it is part of a series, it's book one, but it doesn't end a cliffhanger. The next book is with a different couple, but the story does continue, which it's not out yet though. So this book is mainly about Scarlet and Rogue, but it's also strongly with his three best friends, Godfrey, Louis, and Bonham. But this is not a reverse harem book. This is straight, This is, the relationship is Scarlet and Rogue, but the three best friends play a strong role throughout the book. So Scarlet and Rogue, and the rest of the guys all grew up together in Savannah, Georgia. They were best friends. And then one day the four guys just all turned on her and stopped talking to her. And she had no idea why. And they didn't just ignore her. They started to target her and bully her and push other people to bully her. And because they were the kings of Savannah, if they didn't like her, then nobody else liked her and no one else would stand up for her and protect her. So she ultimately became a loner. So this bully romance is ultimately a we're going to be mean to you because we have to protect you kind of bully. They don't want to do it, but it's the only way they feel for her safety. They do push it a little too far, I think, but I do understand where they're coming from and why they didn't. So the other than the bully part of the romance, the underlining of the story is the four guys have gotten themselves into some deep water and Scarlet gets pulled into it. And that's kind of, that's like the secondary story to the love story. And that's them trying to get themselves out of the situation that they got themselves into. I did really, so I did really enjoy this book a lot. I'm still debating, do I put it in the solid or do I bump it up? To the five star, there are some questions that need to be answered and ended a little abruptly for my liking, but since the story, I'm assuming, continues into book two, even though it's switching couples, I'm hoping more answers will come about from that. And then I can probably fully be like, nah, let's keep it in the solid or it's a five star. So to be determined with this. I 100% do re recommend it though, and will I read it again? But I 100% recommend it because it is a good bully romance. It checks off all the boxes that you want in a typical bully romance. And will I read it again myself? Probably. I can see myself reading this series as a whole when it's all out a couple years down the line. So as always, at the end of a series, I like to talk about a book I want to read in this category. And it was really hard to choose one. I have so many I'm looking forward to reading. But probably the number one, and I think it's been probably the most talked about new book to come out this year in this category and that's the boys of brayshaw high ah oh, guys i have it sitting on my kindle torturing me every day i open up my kindle it's there for me ready to read but i refuse to do it until i know when book three is coming out because it is a trilogy i know book two comes out in may but then it's a matter of will she have like a will megan brandy have a big gap in between two and three i need i can't do cliffhangers people <laughs> i can't i need to know so I'm gonna wait closer to book three, but enough time that I wanna definitely give it my review, at least the first two. So that's all I got for you guys today in this video. As always, happy reading. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye.